So in this video, I just wanted to get a quick stock market update, basically about what's going on in the market and where I think the market finna hit for this year. So right now what we're looking at is SPY, is the S&P 500, is the top 500 companies in the United States. It's an ETF uh, exchange traded fund. So it's really just a basket of stocks. Like I said, it's the top 500 stocks in the United States. It's really like 505, but whatever. So right now the biggest thing that we got, <clears throat> got going on is uh basically what the fed is doing and 99 percent of the time that's really all that matter because when the fed they they quantitative easing or quantitative tightening policies is what's driving markets all the time because you got other little themes that pop up here and there but that is always the biggest thing ain't no thing finna work if it don't fit under the umbrella of what the fed is doing at the time that's brother jay powell so right now, the latest thing that came out is the Fed meeting minutes where they're talking about um, balance sheet runoff. And that's where, so we already we, we already at the point where they say they're going to taper. They said they're going to double tapering. And that's when they stop buying bonds, right? So that is when they, when you buy bonds, you injecting li liquidity into markets. So that's why, like, prices of homes and real estate, all that stuff, assets like stocks, all that stuff been skyrocketing because since COVID, if we go back to the 2020 uh, pandemic, the market had plummeted, see it had plummeted, but they lower interest rates and they start quantitative easing, they buying bonds and all that stuff in the market just skyrocketing. So when you inject the liquidity like that, you making the prices of everything rise and that's inflation. So inflation then got to the point where anger says out of control, but it's out of control. So uh, basically now you have to stop that pumping liquidity into the markets. So that's called tapering. So they said they're going to taper. They said they're going to double the tapering so that now we expect the tapering to be over with in March. Then the other thing you do to fight inflation is raise rates. So rates being low is why like stuff like car loans low mortgages was low everything was low like it was easy to borrow money for pretty much everybody for the past since the pandemic basically so now they tapering they raising rates so the other thing that came out in the meeting minutes was balance sheet runoff and that's just basically i mean that's that's on the spectrum of quantitative tightening that's when they they let bond maturities basically expire so now they pulling money out of markets so notice we went from injecting money to tapering which is to just stop injecting money liquidity all the way to now we sucking out liquidity because there's too much money in, in out there right so that's how they trying to fight inflation and that's dangerous for it's dangerous for assets it it can it can be extremely dangerous for everything but uh, basically you at the point where you got to just think logically, right? So when you invest in the stocks, it doesn't mean the market is finna crash tomorrow. It just mean that certain stuff not finna do as good as other stuff. So we're going to look at Kathy Woods, um, fund. So we're going to go back to when the pandemic first started back in 2020. So this 2020, right? Like I said, they, the fed, the quantitative easing was basically like basically any it's a anything go up type market so this fund is full of stocks that don't really make money they don't make money so riskier assets tend to do really well when you got a um a dovish fed so that just mean dovish is when you have a federal reserve that is um they have they have loose money policies, right? So they, they they have quantitative easing. They're injecting liquidity into markets. So you see how this just skyrocketed. I mean, it just went crazy. So I mean, we can pull up a measurement, right? So we'll say from the bottom of the when the pandemic hit to up here, that's a three hundred ninety some percent return. That is unheard of. That's crazy, right? And that short that short of a time frame. So that's what you had happening. Now you go. This was January, February 2021, when the Fed first started talking about what well, we'll say yields first started rising. 
yields first start rising, stocks like this start plummeting. You see what happened? It never rebounded from this point. And we were talking about yields rising. We won't talk about real rates rising. Now we on the spectrum of real rates rising. So that discussion kind of first start happening back in like the November time frame at the FOMC. So that's the Federal Open Market Committees where uh, Brother Jay Powell come out. And he basically give us a summary of what they talked about at the meeting and stuff. He go on TV, all that stuff. He talked. So now we at the point where we talking about back in November to now, this has fallen like 30 some percent. So you'll see like Kathy Woods get on TV and say um, that these stocks are in deep value territory or something to that effect. I'm not going to say she's wrong because anybody can be right over a certain period of time. She is investing on like a, what is it, like a five plus year time frame or something like that. So she ain't really worried about what hap what's happening tomorrow. But I'm worried about what's happening tomorrow. I'm not about to go put a thousand two thousand dollars i'm not gonna put a dollar into something that i'm not expecting well let's say it like this i'm i'm more so on the side of i'm not gonna put money into something that i am not expecting a return on in that five to seven year time frame with something like this i don't know where the bottom is so yeah you can start buying now and plan to buy in all the way to wherever it goes but you don't really know what you're buying right now. You're buying, honestly, in my opinion, an overvalued asset class. So stuff like that is what you got to think about when, you, when you're when you thinking about what you want to buy. So my mindset for the market is to stay invested in the overall market. We're talking about SPY. I like the Russell 2000 as well, just because the Russell 2000, if we look at it, look at it on a weekly time frame because it doesn't look as crazy yeah it blew up after the pandemic but you'll see it it stopped it just stopped in january 2021 when the yields first started rising it just stopped and it traded sideways for a whole year so they never got overvalued in my opinion so we're talking about a strengthening economy that is the premise of why rates rise you got to give the economy a little a little bit of a cool down so like i said rising rates are really bad for some stuff really good for other stuff like banks so banks have kind of just been trading see that's the pandemic banks kind of traded sideways also and you'll see within the past week or so we've had a, a pretty big pump for, in the banks uh we're now that's places. That's the kind of place that people want to be. So you got to think about value stocks. When you when we're talking about rates rising, we're talking about value stocks, stocks and companies that produce money, stocks that have earnings, stocks that's not dependent on low interest rates. Because when we're talking about, I will call them technology stocks. And I know that's a big basket of stocks. When we we talk about technology stocks, who these are companies where they have to borrow money. And when you're thinking about how they have to borrow money so that they can build their companies now the more money that they're borrowing you got to think if them if that money is getting more expensive to borrow then it the earnings from these companies are going to get worse and worse and worse that is why this has not done well because this they're borrowing money something like the banks they're making money when rates go up so that's the type of place you want to be value stock so one of my favorites also is clf so this is like an iron ore company so um like i said certain things work when they fit under the umbrella of what the federal reserve is doing we talking about rising rates you want to be in cyclicals we're talking about a reopening econ or we're talking about a strengthening economy uh we talk about a strengthening economy we're talking about reopening we're talking about a bunch of stuff with rising rates you want to be in those value stocks companies that's producing money clf cleveland cliffs they're, they're they produce money so you kind of see that they've done much of nothing uh and that since after 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 the new year started last year they, they did pretty well but they kind of just stopped in the summertime they just stopped so you see they started to break out and i mean i think they got a lot of room to run so that's one of the other places that I, I like to be.
you talk about looking at something like um, UNP, Union Pacific, they're on the verge of breaking out right now. So you got to talk about, just think about all these slow growing companies that, that pay you, that pay out a dividend, that give you um, a, st a stable, calculated, known return, you know what I'm saying, like, like a dividend. So that's what you got to think about when you think about where you want to be invested at. So it's hard for me to answer the question of when somebody asks me, what should I be buying right now? I don't know what your goals are. I don't know how much money you're trying to park. I don't know how much risk you're trying to take. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like all of that stuff is stuff you got to think about before you tell somebody what to put their money into or what you think might be a good purchase. So like me, I have money that I'm ready to park and I've been parking it in stuff like weed stocks. So we look at it on a monthly time frame because these have been getting obliterated. So you had the pandemic lows right here and this is uh, Canopy Growth, CGC. So they um, got like a partnership or like partly owned by Constellation Brands. So it takes like a dime worth of um, THC or whatever it is that they putting into these like I'm gonna call them weed drinks. I don't really know what they like what they really is, but it's them weed drinks. So it costs a dime of weed, not like I'm talking about like a, like a real dime, like not like a dime bag, but like a dime of weed, and you can sell that for three to five dollars. This is a industry, in my opinion, that has a lot of room to run. So when I look at that, I waited and I waited and I waited. I knew it was falling. I had no technical reason to buy it. I can think I could have, you know, I had fundamental reasons to buy it when it was up here, but I, I knew that was not smart. Just look at where we had all this resistance right here, right? So I just waited. I had bought some up in here when I didn't know what I was really doing last year, and I sold it up in here. Well, honestly, I probably sold it up in here. I had made really good money and I was like scared because I was like, why am I why is my money double right now? So that was my whole mindset with that. So now I know we back at support. So like I said, my mindset is I, I've had fundamental reasons to buy. We all know the weed industry is growing. Now we're looking at Republican Republicans. Uh, she's from, I forget her name. It was the representative from um, South Carolina. I think she was the one that introduced this legislation to federally legalize marijuana. So right now, Congress is, or I guess the Senate, um, their agenda is to focus on uh, voting legislation the Build Back Better program, and then um, possibly we could start looking at legalizing marijuana. So now I know I have a time for, I have a time frame of when I'm expecting them to possibly start looking into this. I have a technical reason we have support to buy this, right? And I also know from a technical reason that looking at this chart, yeah, this might not be the bottom. So let's say we do fall down here, right? I know I'm looking at a... 40% decline. If I just went and told you, hey, yeah, we should be buying weed stocks right now, you probably going to agree with me. You'd be like, yeah, they legalizing weed, blah, 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 all this stuff. But anything can happen in that time frame where, let's say you go just dump $1,000 in there, and I ain't even bothered to ask you if that's the only money you got or if you're going to be able to average in. I ain't ask you nothing. I just told you, yeah, weed stocks is good stocks to buy. You see $1,000 lose 40%. Now you're down to 600 and you looking at me like I'm crazy. So you start selling, taking your loss, and next thing you know, it start bouncing. You go chasing it again. It's called FOMO, fear of missing out. You can't do that. So this is all the stuff that I'm thinking about. And I also um, forgot to mention that a company like uh, CLF and Nucor, they benefit from that Build Back Better program. So right now we got some, I guess, like debacles or whatever from with Joe Manchin from West Virginia. He's the only Democrat that don't really want to support it right now. So they're having a hard time passing it because you got the 50 50 split in, in uh, the Senate. So basically, the, the Democrats can pass anything they want as long as all 50 of them agree because the tiebreaker is Kamala Harris, the vice president. So, this is all the stuff that you got to think about because you could, I could just tell somebody, yeah, just go buy the SP 500. Like, that's, that's always a possibility. But even at this point, I feel like the market is a little overvalued. But um, well, the, the S and P 500, I would say just based off of just how it's been operating the past few weeks, like it's just been crazy. And I mean, looking at it on a technical basis, it's looking like it don't want to break out. So you got a, a pretty nasty 
candle here uh, on the weekly chart. You had this, uh, it was like a morning star thing. It's a, I mean, it's like an inverted hammer. So, I mean, it ain't looking like it want to break out on a technical basis. So you see before, I mean, this thing was just pumping. This thing was just pumping. Since the pandemic, it's just been pumping. It was no troubles at all. Uh, we ain't had no worries in the world. Now we got fundamental reasons to say, all right, this day might be a little hot right now. So let, let's just see. We ain't had no, we had, we didn't have a 5% or more pullback, like, since I don't even know when. Since I've been investing, which was February 2020, we haven't seen a 5% or more pullback. Well, I mean, after we started rising, of course, in uh, March or whatever it was. The market has to pull back. We haven't had no type of correction. That is very abnormal. That's odd. So it would be very strict. And then, then you have you have the argument that I think it's like a third of the time the market, the market spends a third of its time at all time highs. But it's like, yeah, that's true. I mean, you can go dump your money in. And yeah, dumping um, lump sums of money do outperform uh, or I guess basically closely uh, perform like people who dollar cost average. But ain't nobody trying to just sit here and be wondering what they just bought. So that's that's all the stuff that you got to think about when you thinking about investing. That's you got to think about the risk that you're taking. You got to understand what your investment time horizon is and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, a quick recap is that I'm looking at value stocks. I'm not really too concerned about tech stocks right now. Um, I stay invested in the overall market itself uh, with money that I don't care about for 10 plus years. That's money that you got to just really be ready to park. But when we talk about money that you're trying to produce more money with right now, this is stuff you got to think about. And I think a lot of people who do ask me stuff is in a position that they, where they're not trying to just park money for 10 years. They're trying to do something right now. So it's very hard for me to give somebody that answer and say, yeah, you just go by this. So one thing you could do is definitely follow the YouTube channel. You can follow my Instagram at 6 fat daddy 9 and you can join our Discord where we talk about all this stuff on a daily basis. And uh, we, we trade option contracts as well. So uh, the website is investorsanonymous.net. And the link to that is also in my Instagram at 6 fat daddy 9 So that's all the kind of stuff you can think about. And we got an educational course out as well, talking about explaining how to trade. I mean, go from stock market terminology for somebody who's never heard of a stock. We, we break down what stocks is, um, all of that stuff. We break down the market and we talk about everything. And then we go into how we, uh, how we know what to trade. Uh, we talk about patterns. We talk about candlesticks and we talk about literally everything. So anything you would need to know to learn how to trade, I think that will put you in a position, a decent position to be able to understand how to long-term invest because long-term investing is so easy as long as you can wait. If you have time to wait, you pretty much have nothing to worry about. Um, because, I mean, every market crash has always recovered. And, I mean, I don't see that changing. I, I mean, the markets might have some trouble for this rate hike period that we're in. Um, but once we have an actual correction or even a recession, then we'll have a better idea of understanding what the true value of all this stuff is because there's a lot going on right now and they say stay invested in markets and you do that you just do that with money you're willing to park for 10 plus years and you take other money that you're willing to trade with and you just work from there because Warren, Warren Buffett is the greatest investor of all time people can say what they want we can talk about Captain Woods we can talk about Ray Dalio we can talk about anybody Warren Buffett I mean He's outperformed these these hedge funds, these active managers or whatever it was. Um, well, I mean, I say he, but he just invested in the market and just let it sit. So that's how you that's how you do it, man. That's how you play the game. Like I said, you can join our Discord, follow the YouTube channel, all that stuff. Follow me on Instagram, and I'm gonna try to stay consistent and get some content out uh, a couple times a month. So hope y'all stay tuned in. I hope y'all learn a little something. I mean, it's a lot to soak in, so it's a lot to say, and I try to say it as, brief, as briefly as possible, but when you try to condense what you're saying, you, you tend to miss so, so much information that you have to say, so this video is a little long, but I hope y'all enjoyed it, and like I said, I hope you learned something, so I will definitely catch y'all next time.